On today's show, we have Mylan Lazich, the Director of Content Marketing at Synopsys. Now, Synopsys is a very large company working in a very niche area of the tech industry, a vital but niche area. And Mylan does a great job explaining how he thinks about B2B marketing, how he thinks about reaching that ultimate buyer through today's content marketing tools and tactics. And Mylan also has experience working in B2C. So I asked him what he thought the differences and similarities are between uh, marketing to consumers and marketing to business buyers. I think you'll find that answer interesting. I really enjoyed how he got into the tools and tactics and into the details of how he actually does the work today. You guys are going to enjoy this conversation. Here is Mylan Lazich. So why don't you just start off by giving us a quick background on, uh, on what Synopsys is and what it is that you do. Sure. Thanks, John. Happy to be here. Um, yes, my name is Mylan Lazich. I'm with Synopsys. We uh, are an EDA company that's uh, electronic design automation. Uh, EDA companies deliver software that's used in the design and creation of semiconductor devices. So most every chip company in the world uses uh, some piece of Synopsys software. And I've been in this industry most of my time in Silicon Valley. And I can see, so you're director of content marketing. What does content marketing entail at a company like Synopsys? Well, content marketing as a, uh, as a practice or as a function is, has been growing significantly in, uh, in, the, in the last few years. Um, the use of content is a key element in demand generation, uh, lead generation. Companies have learned that uh, a few things about how best to reach customers. One of them is that customers do a lot of research before they ever make a purchase. And they want to get as much information to inform that purchase as they can before they actually commit uh, dollars and time and what have you. So as a result, they do their homework. And uh, they'll the internet has enabled that kind of research to be done from anywhere. So customers, uh, prospective users, prospective customers, do their research online and they know what they're looking for. So they're going to be looking for uh, a solution to a problem or something that they're trying to fill a need. So content marketing is something of the art and science of publishing material that your prospective users will find. So you need to understand uh, it involves a lot of things. You, it's not just publishing good content. You need to understand how that content will be found and will a user, uh, how will they look for it? Will they, what keywords are they going to use? What terms are they likely to search for? Uh, pretty much every industry has its own shorthands. And so, you know, we use our, we, we'll use our own language to refer to something. Uh, you need to be cautious that that's the same language your customer uses. They may not think of it the same way you do. Um, so content marketing is, uh, thinking about, well, what content is my user going to be looking for? How will they look for it? What are they, what questions are they trying to answer? And, uh, it's, it's that process of developing material that, uh, your prospective user will a find and then B find useful and C find compelling so that they feel this is the solution to the problem this is uh this fills the need i'm trying to i'm trying to fill that's really interesting and, and a lot to dig into there so the first question i have about that is you talk about uh obviously there's demand generation but you're facilitating that through content and and information so how do you think about driving um actual objectives, whether that's booking a sales meeting or booking, you know, whatever it is that your ultimate objective is closing a sale for, for, um, for the company versus, um, just driving, uh, demand creation, desire, interest. How do you balance that in the kinds of content that you put out? Well, uh, the, the approach that most people take these days and, you know, bear in mind that approaches to marketing change over time, we're always refining it finding new, new ways to do it. Uh, you can, you know, traditionally or his, right now, it's the image that most of us have of this process is a funnel. And we think of the wide end of the funnel where you're trying to capture as much interest from as many people as you can. 
and ideally, you'll start to entice the people you attract at that wide end of the uh, wide end of the funnel with uh, further content that will drill down to the interests that they have and get more specific to what they're looking for. Now, the, the further down in the funnel you get, uh, the closer you get to a place where one of your salespeople can engage with, with that prospective user and uh, engage with them in a way where they're talking with them, understanding what they're looking for, and then uh, put forth the options that your company has and move them closer from uh, someone who didn't know about your company, happened to find out about your company, oh, this looks interesting, let me de delve a little deeper to the point where, okay, now you've convinced me this is going to solve the problem I'm trying to solve. And so they're willing to sign up and become a customer. So it's, a, it's an ongoing process. And as I said, it's the wide end of the funnel down to the narrow end where the salesperson engages. You don't sell to everybody, but you uh, try to attract as many of the likely customers as you can and then move it along the pro move it move them along the process mm -hmm. now mo most of your experience i can see over the last five ten years has been in the b2b space uh you're selling to the enterprise or you're marketing to the enterprise i should say uh, are there any tools that jump out at you maybe two or three tools that you think now heading into 2023 are really the ones to use to to reach that audience you know, the uh, if you look across the spectrum of con formats of content, it, they all have their own purposes. Um, so I'll just speak to the formats first. I mean, uh, certainly in B2B, um, you, we publish a lot of written content. And that can come in the form of you know, what's very popular, blogs. Because blogs are uh, a vehicle by which you can demonstrate to your, your market, to your pers prospective customers, uh, what your expertise is and offer the confidence that, okay, this company knows about the problem that I'm trying to to solve. Uh, then it's also a, a vehicle for teaching, giving them some uh, information that might help them solve their problem, help them do their job. And that's a way of engaging them with your company. Oh, this company helps me do my job. I haven't spent any money yet, but I now know more about uh, how I, I can approach this this problem or this uh, need that I'm trying to fill. And so some blogs um, are, I, I, I read a lot of blogs, they're educational, they help me do my job, and as a result, I have a positive affinity for that company. I may or may not become a customer down the road, but they're they're in my brain because I've they've helped me solve the problem. Now, there's a lot of other formats um, of content there uh, you can deliver material as a podcast you can deliver it as a video and then when you start into video there's just another further sub spectrum of types of video there's whiteboard videos which are uh, very good for training purposes uh, for educational purposes there you know how many videos do we see on social media today i mean i don't know, I don't know how many millions are created every day you know, Twitter and TikTok and Instagram, they're all over. Obviously, these all serve different purposes. For a B2B marketer, um, they may not be as popular. Or they may not, you may not be reaching your, your audience, but I think you can't rule it out either. Uh, so video is another format that's obviously uh, got a lot of potential. Uh, white papers in the B2B space, particularly in technology space, as in you know, where I work, the, again, your offering some value to your prospective user in the form of education. They can read a white paper and know better about how they can approach the problem they, they have and that they're trying to solve. And they can get a sense of how, that, uh, how they can do that using your company, your, your company's product. So um, it's never a bad thing to help give them an idea how to solve a problem through the lens that benefits you. So. Uh, that's yeah. one of the benefits of white papers. There's, there's so many formats and then there's, there's, there's quick formats of content. Um, you can run a poll on social media, ask, put a question out there. Uh, th you see this a lot in, uh, B2C where people are asking, well, how do you, what's your trick for cooking a turkey for Thanksgiving? And all of a sudden you get all these ideas. You can, you can repurpose that 
those responses into something. If you're a, a company that sells turkey or turkey recipes, frankly, it wouldn't appeal to me because I'm vegetarian, but that's another, <laughs> that's just an example. Um, and uh, there's infographics and uh, listicles. The, the gamut of content forms is, is wide and they all have their own particular applications. Yeah. And and then how do you think about attribution? Because one of the um, struggles that you have as a marketer is, is, and I agree with everything you're saying, creating content and creating that top of funnel so that you have a wide net of people that could, you know, prospectively be customers, but you're only going to close a certain small percentage of them. How do you then go back at the end of the quarter or the year and say, this worked or this didn't work? How are you tracking it at, that at the end and also throughout the whole process? Yeah, it's a really good question. I think uh, it's it's not done ideally by just yet. I think uh, I should back up. I think everybody's finding out ways to do it better. And it really comes down to, uh, do we know where this person who came into our orbit, where did they come from? Do we know that? And then um, what it's usually you start with, where did they come from? How many are there? Okay, great. Where did they come from? That's good. Next question, what did they do once they came to our website? What's the behavior? I really want to understand what did, once we got them to our website with some piece of content, uh, were we successful in getting, getting them to stay on the website? How long did they stay on the website? Did they engage with another part of our website? Did they go to another, did they go to our product page? Great, maybe now I'm finding out that this blog that we got them to read was successful in driving them to the product I'm trying to sell. Then did I get them to, um, were they persuaded sufficiently such that they filled out a form to download another piece of content, watch a webinar, et cetera? Uh, mm -hmm. So then you find out, now you're getting into, uh, I've gotten their information, their, their contact information. Now I can really show some value to the salespeople because I've given them a lead. So, and I can, I can say they've read this blog and they wanted to find out more about this product. And then they gave me, they filled out this form to sign up for a webinar about that product. Now you're, you're seeing someone who is at least a warm prospect for the salesperson. Mm -hmm. um, from a technology standpoint, how do you do it? It all starts with how, do, how are we tagging these, these um, pieces of content? How do, or if I run a campaign on social media, paid or organic? Is it tagged accordingly? Can I find where they came from? And then once they came in through that door, what did they do after that? So then you can start to roll back and see not only what um, content was attractive, but then what content compelled some kind of activity, some behavior that gets us where we want to go. So it, it's really, uh, it is art and science. Uh, when it comes to marketing these days, you, you really don't want to start any marketing activity until you know how you're going to measure it from start to finish to see if you were successful. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about uh, uh, search for a second and search engine optimization. For for a very long time, um, you know, the only place that really mattered was Google. You wanted to have your results at the top of Google. And these days, so much discovery, call it search or discovery, happens on YouTube or happens on um, Instagram or even TikTok or or Reddit, uh, other uh, you know, forums where people gather. How do you think about search uh, and being in the place where people are searching for that information um, to, today versus five or ten years ago? Uh, the the biggest thing that I think what I think of most when I think about search is that in, and I'm going to put speak to this through the lens of uh, content marketing is if you're if you're creating content um, search and SEO is not something you worry about after the fact <clears throat> you need to think about it while you're creating the content and if you're writing a blog uh, think about what keywords do I want this blog to uh, perform against and what, what keywords are people likely to be searching on? And to, to the question you asked, it, it will depend or it can depend on what channel they're using. And someone on LinkedIn is going to be using a different search parameter. Someone on a search engine is going to be using, might be using different words. Someone on Instagram or TikTok, I don't know what they'll be searching on, but you need to bear in mind what your audience in, in, in that channel or through that channel is likely to be looking for. 
And then as you're preparing the content, bear in mind, these are the, these are the terms they're going to be looking for. I need to make sure I do appropriate keyword research and make sure that we have the appropriate keywords uh, embedded in our content. And uh, then you get into, um, in the case of a blog, you might include an image. Make sure you're, you're sufficiently tagging that content. And you're tagging the image, alt tags. Um, uh, do a search on Google, and you can see a lot of people just go right to the image tab. And let's see what comes up. And, oh, that looks like what I think I want. And they'll click on the image. They're not going to see your image unless you've planned ahead to have it properly tagged for the things that people might be searching on. Mm -hmm. So I noticed in your background, you've also had time working in B2C and e-commerce. Are there big differences or things you had to unlearn and then relearn when you went from consumer to B2B? Uh, there's actually more similarity, I think. Uh, there is a different kind of consumer, but I'm not, uh, or customer. Uh, I don't think, uh, I think the process is similar, uh, but but there are, there are differences. Um, I think the B2C shopper, and this is where it, what's interesting is the terminology changes. Right. Because I don't think I don't think of an EDA customer as a shopper, <laughs> but, right? But in uh, retail, if if it's consumer goods, yeah, we, we use the word shopper without any hesitation. So, uh, so if if you're looking for uh, apparel, um, it, it's not going to be that different from looking for software because you you have in mind certain attributes. It's going to be for a particular application. Is this a winter coat? Am I looking for shoes? What kind of shoes? Um, you're going to have certain attributes that are particular to you, such as size, color, um, price range. And these are all going to be part of your search activity. Uh, and then when, you, when you're online, you're looking for a coat for shoes, what have you. You're looking for something that meets your uh, requirements. Now, content marketing applied to B2C, similar principles because as with B2B, uh, do I have a blog about how somebody, let's say it's a handbag. Did somebody uh, blog about that handbag and how liked, how they how much they liked it? Yelp reviews obviously come into play. That, it's another place that uh, a lot of search activity. And uh, I'd say that fundamentally, there's not a difference. You need to think in terms of who's my audience, what are they going to be looking for, how can I uh, use the appropriate keywords and frame my content in a way that it's going to attract them. It's, so it's it's a similar approach. You just have to use some different tools out of the toolbox. Mm -hmm. So the, the last thing I wanted to touch on was AI and automation. Uh, there's been so much talk about artificial intelligence, not just talk, but tools that are available now to create graphic designs and, and copywriting and all these sorts of things. Um, when it comes to content marketing, do you think AI is having a big impact today or do you see it You know, maybe in the next two, three years having a big impact in changing how we do things? I think it, it is. Um, I think people are in some ways... In some ways, AI is very effective. I think in other ways, we're, we're figuring it out still. Um, if you go back a few years, AI, AI might have been as simple as um, um, retargeting, and right. we're going to re we're going to take information about what people are searching for, uh, to take that information, serve up appropriate ads that should be responsive to what they're looking for, or at least. Uh, should also appeal to this this uh, searcher, depending on what they're looking for. Uh, other ways uh, AI comes into play, um, you know, back to the B2C model, I was working with a company a while back or talking to somebody at a company a while back in the um, apparel space. And they launched their website and went and found a company to do um, the call center function, customer service. After a while, they realized we're not getting many calls. People want to go online. What did they want to do? They wanted to get, get, do online chat. It's faster. They don't have to go through the call tree, and uh, they can just ask a question online. They get an answer right away. It was much faster. Well, what's the next generation of that? Chatbots. Sure. So now you're, you've taken out the human to respond to it because you put in, hopefully, enough intelligence. 
my personal experiences with chatbots have been mixed. When I'm a, when I'm looking for something, they almost never un understand my question. But that's going to get that's going to improve as AI improves. Now, other 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 ways uh, AI we're seeing it. Um, I actually uh, spoke not long ago at a uh, marketing class at a university nearby on the topic of content marketing, specifically the use of tools that have appeared in the last few years for generating content based on AI. And if you define the parameters of a blog, for instance, or some other piece of content, these tools will look on the web and based on the inputs you're providing, they will generate content. It's um, not a finished product. It still requires your editing and your polishing to make it suitable for your purpose. But you can, in a few minutes, generate hundreds of words of content targeting the parameters you define. And it's based on, it's, these tools basically are digesting the information they, they have found on the web in a way that a human couldn't do nearly as quickly. So uh, I th there's already plenty of content on the web that is AI generated or largely AI generated. I don't think that's gonna slow down any time because uh, there's just so much appetite for content and marketers can't do it all themselves. Yeah, well put. Um, I, I agree. I think there's, uh, I've, I've played around with some of those tools and to see uh, that they're not there yet today, as you said, but the advances that we're seeing and how well they can write, uh, it is pretty fascinating. Yeah, I've I've played around with them. Um, I think they're great. Right now, I would say use them to get started. If it's right. a topic you don't have a lot of personal expertise in, uh, think about the questions you need to answer. Use the, that as the basis. Put this, put these into the tools, and uh, you'll get something back that you can do some further research on and refine it further. Um, it's definitely a, it's definitely a tool that helps. It's, it, it won't replace writers, at least not for a while. Yeah. Well, Mylan, thank you so much for joining us today. Not at all. Thanks, John.